In this tutorial, we will be discussing dimensional analysis, or how to perform conversions. So, in science, you had to convert between units an awful lot. Units are multiplied, divided, and canceled out like any other algebraic quantity. Using units as a guide to solving problems is called dimensional analysis, and there's a few things that you need to remember with this. Always write the number that number with the associated unit. That keeps coming up over and over and over again. You need to write your units. You cannot be lazy with those. Always include units in your calculations, dividing them and multiplying them as if they were algebraic quantities. And do not let units appear or disappear in calculations. Units must flow logically from beginning to end. So the very first thing you want to do is figure out what you have and what you want. So here, what I have is three kilograms. What I want is to know how many ounces there are. Once I know that I'm going from kilograms to ounces, I can look for conversion factors that go with it. Conversion factors are at one quantity equal to another quantity. So for instance, one kilogram is equal to 2.2046 pounds. One pound is equal to 16 ounces. I said before, you're going to add like their algebraic quantities. So that's like me saying 3 squared is equal to 9. They're both the same thing. They're just written differently. Do not be confused by this. Write the given number you have as a fraction over 1. So if I'm starting off with 3 kilograms, such as I am here. I'm going to put it over 1 and I'm going to put parentheses around it. I've now converted the 3 kilograms to a fraction. I've not affected what that value is. 3 kilograms divided by 1 is still 3 kilograms. Anything divided by 1 is still itself. So 5 divided by 1 is still 5. 20 divided by 1 is still 20. 3 kilograms is still 3 kilograms when it's divided by 1. Now we're going to pay attention to the units. Multiply that by the fraction with the unit to be canceled in the denominator, the bottom of the next line. So if I have kilograms here, I want to make sure I have kilograms down here. Anything divided by itself is equal to 1. So if I do 5 divided by 5, that's going to equal 1. If I do 80 divided by 80, that's going to equal 1. If I do kilograms divided by kilograms, that's still going to equal 1. It's going to cancel each other out to be 1. So now I'm going to look at the conversion factor over here, and I see that the number, I look for kilograms, and I see that the number 1 goes with kilograms. So I'm going to put 1 with it. What is equal to goes on the top of that line. So 2.2046 oh pounds is going to go on the top. These two things are equivalent. So I'm multiplying a fraction, but it's just a weird way of looking at 1. It's as if I said 5 divided by 5 times some number. It's still the value of 1. It's just a different way of looking at the number. So 2.2046 pounds is equal to 1 kilogram. Since those two are equal to each other, if I divide it by each other, if I divide both of these by 1 kilogram, the 1 kilograms cancel out to equal 1. So I'm multiplying this 3 kilograms by the number 1. It's just a different way of looking at 1. So these kilograms then cancel out, because kilograms divided by kilograms is 1. Now I have pounds up here. I'm going to do that process again. So pounds are on top. I want to put pounds on the bottom. Since I already used this kilogram unit, I'm not going to use it again. I'm going to look at this next one, because it's going from pounds to ounces. Where you're going from is always going to be on the bottom. Where you're going to will always be on the top, to top. Maybe you can remember it that way. 
So if I have pounds, I want to look at my conversion factor, and I find the word pound, and I note that it has one. That is equal to 16 ounces. So that's what I'm going to put on the top. Once again, because pounds divided by pounds is equal to 1, that gets canceled out. So the final calculation, when you put it into your calculator, will be 3 times 2.204 times 16. If we were to multiply other fractions, You would multiply the top together, 1 times 3 times 2, and you would multiply the bottom together, 2 times 2 times 3. That's the exact same thing you're going to do here. You're going to multiply the top together, and you're going to multiply the bottom together, and then you're going to divide the 2. And that comes out down here. Our final answer is 105.8208 ounces. Now, let's look at significant figures. Our initial number only had one significant figure in it. These are definitions. Not only are they less than, not only are they more than three, more than that one significant figure of just the number three, but they're also definitions, so I'm not going to count them in the significant figure calculation. So I only want one significant figure here, which makes me round it off to 100 ounces. That's a lot of information to absorb. So we're going to do this a few more times just to get it clear. All right, so let's start off with an easy one. How many inches are in 16.3 centimeters? Figure out what we have and what we want. We have centimeters, we want inches, so we want to go from centimeters to inches. We have a conversion factor written here already going from centimeters to inches. We have both of the units where we're coming from and where we're going to in the same conversion factor, so this is the only conversion factor we're going to need for this problem. Then, so I have the conversion factors, put the number over 1, so 16.3 centimeters over 1. I have centimeters on top, so I want to put that in the denominator of the next one. Look at my conversion factor, find centimeters. You notice that 2.54 goes with centimeters. That is equal to 1 inch. So 16.3 divided by 2.54 the centimeters cancel out. You can multiply the top and the bottom. So 16.3 times 1 is on top, and 1 times 2.54 is on bottom. That comes out to be 6.417. Notice every single time I made sure to write the units. The centimeters ended up canceling out, so I do not have to write those again. I could if I wanted to, however. I could say 16.3 centimeters times inches over 2.54 centimeters. Then I notice here the centimeters cancel out. Either way, the centimeters are going to cancel out. I have three significant digits in that starting number, so I want to take the first three numbers. So that becomes 6.4, because of that 7, I'm going to round it up to 6.42. You may notice on this particular example, and this is true for all of these, that the top number you multiply, the bottom number you ended up dividing. So if you wanted to do this all in your calculator at one time, it would be 16.3 times 1 divided by 2.54 and it's going to come out to be that same answer. Let's try another one. We have a couple harder ones now. How many feet are in 0 0.4734 kilometers? We're going from kilometers to feet. In order to do that, I'm going to have to go through another unit, because if I have kilometers here, they tell me how many yards. 
Well, that means I need to get two feet, so that means I need to figure out how many feet are in a yard. So I'm going to have three brackets total using two conversion factors. Put the first number over one. I have kilometers on top. I want to put kilometers on the bottom of the next one. Once I have the unit there, I can go back and look at my conversion factors. And I notice that one goes with kilometers. And that is equal to 1,093.613 yards. The kilometers cancel to equal one. I'm going to cross this out now so I don't confuse myself. I have yards on top, so I'm going to put yards on the bottom of the next one. One goes with yards, and th it is equal to three feet. Now the yards cancel. So, if I were to put this all into my calculator at once, it would be 0.4734 times 1,093.613 divided by 1 times 3 divided by 1. You may need to put your equal sign in between those, depending on your calculator. That comes out to be 1,553.149. I have four significant figures in this number. The zero does not count because it's a leading zero. So I'm going to take the first four numbers here. So 1,553 feet. We're going to do one more. In this one, there's two different ways to go about doing it. We are dealing with cubes now. So volume, which is a derived unit. We have yards to cubic feet. We know that we have three feet and one yard. We've seen that at several different times now. However, this is for a single foot, and we have cubic here. There's a couple different ways of going about doing this. One way is if you separate out these yards cubed. So 1.2 yards times yards times yards. That means I need to do this equation three times. So, in one yard, that's three feet. I can cancel one set out. I have two more up here I need to cancel out. So, one yard is three feet. I can cancel another set out. I have one more I want to do. One yard is three feet. So, that means I'm going to do 1.2 times 3 times 3 times 3 which then comes out to be 32.4. Because I have feet times feet times feet, that's feet cubed. The other way of going about doing that is if we cube our conversion factor itself. So 3 cubed will be 27. Feet cubed is cubic feet. 1 cubed is 1. 1 times 1 times 1 is equal to 1. Yards cubed is yards cubed. I can put this into the calculation now by saying 1.2 yards cubed. And then look at my new conversion factor here. 1 yard cubed is equal to 27 feet cubed. So those automatically cancel out all of them at one time to bring me to the same answer. Now that we know how to do the conversion, let's look at the significant figures. We have two in the initial number. That means I'm going to have two in the answer. This is a definition, so therefore it doesn't count towards the final significant figures. So 32 feet cubed will be my final answer in both scenarios because I only want two significant figures. And that's how you do dimensional analysis. There's really no shortcut method to this. 
It's just practice, and the more you practice, the better you're going to be.